What class do I want to entirely misrepresent next? Eeny, meeny, my, it's it's rogue. I'm I'm picking rogue. Everybody hates rogues. It's true. Every single person who plays this godforsaken game has at least one negative story about a rogue. There is no other class with such a well-known reputation of scummy activity. It's somehow worse than mage. If mages are exploitative venture capitalists who do terrible things legally, rogues are vile mafia bosses who gain their fortune through underground crime. They're all in it for themselves, and they all hate each other too. If you somehow have never experienced being screwed over by a rogue, here is my very first rogue story. It all started in Cataclysm. I had only just hit max level recently, and I was in a cesspool social guild. We barely managed to throw together an Obsidian Sanctum mount run with some guildies in trade chat. One of these trade chat pugs was a rogue. I still remember his name to this day, Slayer Tang XX. He was decked out in full heroic Firelands gear, and when he joined the group, I knew it would be an easy run. You see, back in Cataclysm, soloing old raids was still a challenge. A 25-man Obsidian Sanctum run still required a decent-sized group and knowledge of mechanics. Slayer Tang XX promised us it would be easy. He asked us if we could pass him raid lead so that he could set up markers and do callouts. We were so enamored by his heroic gear and achievements that we trusted him. I passed him raid leader, and that also means he was now the loot master. Sartharian Three Drakes went perfectly. He put down markers and made raid callouts. The dragon fell and we were all so excited to get a chance to roll on the Twilight Drake. Slayer Tang XX has looted the reins of the Twilight Drake. Slayer Tang XX left the group. For a year or so, I would see him occasionally flying around Orgrimmar on that purple dragon, and then sometime in Pandaria, he disappeared completely. I hated him, and I still hate him. I'm glad he quit, or got banned, or whatever. Despite this, I would be lying if I said that I didn't still watch out for him from time to time. There were many scumbag rogues after him, and there still are to this day, but none quite left the same impression as that bastard. Anyways, that's my rogue story. Some people have similar ones, and some people have much, much different ones. The big connecting thread between all of these stories is that the rogue class tends to attract a certain kind of asshole. The kind of person that gets off on social manipulation and controlling others for their own personal gain. Someone who would burn an orphanage down for $10. Someone who would ninja the Twilight Drake from Obsidian Sanctum 25. I mean, honestly, the class itself encourages this kind of behavior. I genuinely believe that at least 90% of rogues are diagnosed sociopaths, with the other 10% being made up of weebs and pirate enthusiasts. I know that's a hefty accusation, but I've met rogues like Slayer Tang XX constantly for the 13 years that I've played this game. So honestly, the psychotic behavior starts within the first 10 levels. Almost immediately, you're given the ability to go invisible. Is that what stealth is? There is no other stealth game where your main method of sneaking is literally becoming transparent. Imagine how easy Metal Gear Solid would be if you could stealth like in WoW. The game would be over in 10 minutes. Being able to go invisible from such a low level immediately presents rogues with an entire world of opportunity. Opportunity for exploitation, that is. Look at me skip all of these mobs to go straight for the quest objective while little Johnny struggles. I like to see little Johnny as my personal tank. He just doesn't know it yet. Are you ever doing Wailing Caverns and the rogue intentionally stealths ahead to grab flowers before helping you kill anything? Yeah, fuck that guy. What you don't know though, is that this same guy is going to be in your raid group at max level, and by that time he is already going to have socially engineered the entire officer team to give him loot priority. It will be subtle, but he will just so happen to get tier set pieces before anybody else. Those brand new daggers, they go to him. Wait, wait, no, give him the swords too, just in case he needs to go combat. It'll all happen slowly, little by little, until he's geared to the teeth. Then, all of a sudden, you'll wake up one Saturday morning and the guild bank is empty and everybody has been kicked. The rogue's character name doesn't exist anymore, so he probably hopped servers and changed names in the process. This, my friend, is why you don't ever trust a rogue. You won't see it coming, but they will stab you in the back the second it's profitable for them. The only thing worse than a friendly rogue is a hostile one. The first thing you'll hear is that sound. That awful, terrible sound. Ugh. 
Then you'll get sapped. This is where your fate is up to the sick and twisted mind of the rogue that has targeted you. They might choose to play with you the same way a cat plays with a mouse before killing it. This may go on forever. Then they'll either choose to let you go if they're feeling generous, or you'll hear this sound. In the unlikely event that the enemy rogue doesn't kill you, or you decide to bring some friends, they will just vanish. Yes, they can stealth in combat. Uh, let's talk about the three different types of rogues. First, you have assassination rogues. These rogues specialize in poisoning their enemies and cutting them open. That means a lot of damage over time. Ass Rogue is the rep paladin of rogues, so if you want the classical rogue fantasy and you also don't have a brain, this is probably the spec for you. If you want to get good at Ass Rogue, you should probably get really good at Feral Druid. Feral Druid is so awful that if you learn how to play it optimally and then switch back to Ass Rogue, you will be a god. Next we have Outlaw Rogues. In reality, this should just be called Pirate Rogue because that's what it is. Guns, hooks, and gambling. If you love the surprise mechanics of Diablo Immortal, this spec will shiver your timbers because every 45 seconds, you get to open a loot box and find out if you're going to deal any damage or not. Everybody who plays this spec is either a Pirates of the Caribbean fan or a former combat rogue stuck in limbo after their entire class fantasy was shattered in an instant. The final specialization available for rogues is subtlety. This is the spec best suited for sociopathic behavior due to its large toolbox. There's not a single single thing alone that makes this spec overpowered, but in the right hands it will bend you over. Subrogue can be summed up as manipulative and controlling. The only upside to this is that mechanically the spec is only as good as the player. It doesn't matter that a subrogue can sap you, silence your healer, teleport to blind you when you trinket, and then teleport back to your healer to kill them. If the player can't press those buttons in that order, then you'll just make them your bitch. In fact, there is one class that specializes in making rogues their bitch. Come here, you sneaky little bitch. Ah! Please don't hurt me! I can smell your little man pussy from a mile away. <laughs> Looking like a double wide surprise. <laughs> God damn. Look, here's my personal advice on how to handle rogues. Just don't. The less you interact with them, the happier you'll be. Also, turn off war mode, and then you'll never have to experience the infinite stunlock. If for whatever reason you decide to do arena, just pray to Bobby that the rogue does I know it's difficult to find a way forward, but remember, she made her decision. You can only control the decision that you make now. It also seems like your s*** is getting worse. I'm going to double your medication. What class do I want to entirely misrepresent next? Eeny, meeny, my, it's, it's rogue. I'm, I'm picking rogue.